What's going on guys? Your old pal CHH here today. So I wanted to do a Vestron collection today. Not even necessarily because like I just wanted to show them off because I don't have the whole collection. I've got a lot of them. But what I wanted to do is the reason I wanted to do this because I think there's titles in here that are still somewhat um, underground titles. And maybe if you're getting into the label, I can kind of say, hey, these are some that I, I really, really like. And maybe you could check out that, that sort of thing. Um, I love this label. They've been really great. There's a uniformity to it that a collectors really like. The price points now are amazing, but they weren't at first. They were com they were competitive, but they weren't top of the line price point. They were pretty about the same price, twenty two ninety nine, twenty four ninety nine when they started. Granted, they were putting out some really good titles, some marquee titles, uh, but still some that I think are like no 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 like you, you got to go back and get this one. This movie's like really good. So let's start from the top and work our way down. Uh, the first one we've got. Of course, it's Chopping Mall. Now, Chopping Mall is one hell of a way to start a label. I, I couldn't think of a better way, and uh, Vestron did a great job with this. The, the video looks good. There's uh, interviews with Kelly Maroney, Steve Mitchell. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff. Um, d director uh, Jim Wynorski commentary. Uh, and, and, yeah, one hell of a movie. Famously called Killbots, but it got turned into Chopping Mall because a janitor overheard Roger Corman and Jim Wynorski talking. Because they didn't like the title that they had. And they were like, just call it Chopping Mall. You know, where shopping costs you an arm and a leg. And that came right out after they said that. So, nope. Excuse me. So, Chopping Mall, one hell of a way to start a label. That That's a must-own. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I think are must-owns from this label that I have. Chopping Mall is a must-own. Uh, Blood Diner is the second release. And this is, again, another must-own. Uh, what a wild, insane bat s movie this is i absolutely adore blood diner it's quirky it's gory it's funny uh it's got a killer sense of humor first they greet you then they eat you the director did a really good job on this um yeah this is 80s ridiculousness at its finest uh blood diner is a must own as well i promise i'm not gonna say all of these are must own but the first number of them definitely are possibly the best release that they've done the waxwork one and two double pack uh, what's brilliant about this is they they knew that the waxwork one poster is a must uh, is a favorite for the fans, so you could either have the first movie's artwork or you can flip it and have the second movie's artwork. So yeah, they did a great job there. This is also the only one I have that has a white case to it. But yeah, this is a great, great Vestron release. I love it. Uh, you get a lot of good stuff. You get a, a audio commentary with Anthony Hickox and Zach Galligan, which people love. Uh, Waxwork Chronicles Parts 1 through 6 featurette. There's really underrated werewolf segment. You could kind of call the werewolf, you can kind of call Waxwork a uh, anthology film, I guess. It's segmented, but it's really, really good. And the werewolf one's fantastic. Must own. I promise not all of them will be. But this one can kind of is too. I mean, come on, Return of the Living Dead 3. I was over the moon when this got announced uh, because I'm a big fan, obviously, of Return of the Living Dead 1 through 3. So when I found out that when I found out Part 3 was coming out on 4K, I lost my beans. I mean, I really did. And not only did they go, do a good job with this, but they've got, you know, uh, Brian Usna audio commentary. Uh, you've got uh, Melinda Clark in here. Um, Steve Johnson, Chris Nelson interviews. Uh, production... Uh, editors production designers uh but the, the best thing is this uh they they have brian penny the writer who i love and um brian usna um uh, that's the, that's his name right john penny not brian penny john penny who i love really nice guy they sit him in a room and just let him talk and they really go over the movie really really well and i loved it so much so that's a great great interview uh, not really an interview, just a conversation. And there's this beautiful Part 3 poster behind them that's gorgeous. You ought to keep your eye on that when they're talking. Chud 2, baby. There's a rumor this was going to be Return of the Living Dead 2, but turn it into Chud 2. I don't know how true that is, and I don't recall them mentioning anything about that on this release, but Chud 2 is freaking awesome. How do you not love Chud 2? It's hysterical. Great sense of humor on Chud 2. Uh, nothing like the first movie. I don't know if I like this more than Chud 1. They're just very different. I don't know. I think I kind of like Chud 2 more. I'd say those are all must-owns. 
This is the first one I won't say is a must-own parents. I'm not saying I dislike this film. I just watched it and I thought it was fine. You know, I thought it was fine. Uh, I got it for Randy Quaid, obviously. I was like, oh, cool, Randy Quaid's in, a, in this movie. And I heard about this movie. I remember seeing the poster art for it. Um, and it's not bad. It's not bad. It's very quirky and weird. It's worth a watch for sure. I checked Tubi first and see if you can check that out. All right, this is an absolute must-own. One of the most underrated 80s horror films ever made, The Gate. The Gate has no business being as good as it is. It was um, one of those movies where I was watching it, and it kept getting better and better as it went along, which is weird. You don't usually see that. A lot of movies blow their loads pretty quick, but this movie just got better and better and crazier and better special effects and bigger special effects. The Gate is phenomenal. Phenomenal film. I love it, and this is a great release stack with special features from the makers talking all about this film. Yeah, this is great. I love The Gate. Possibly my favorite release. And my lucky number is 8, and that happens to be the number of this release, too. Wishmaster Collection. I'd say this is a must-own, too, if you can get it for a good price. I, I really love the first Wishmaster. I'm, I'm fine with the sequels, 2, 3, and 4. Um, they're, they're fine. I, I enjoy them. I, I have no problem ever wanting to watch those. But the first one is really the seminal one to me. I love it. Uh, so you got Robert England in there. Kane Hodder's in there. Um, it, it's just great. And I love the Wishmaster character. So gross looking. In the beginning of Wishmaster, there's a scene where he becomes like that demigod looking character. But he's not fully strength strengthened yet. And he's got to crawl to this person to get blood from him. And it's creepy as hell. But I'm a big fan of Wishmaster. Great film. And uh, yeah, I was really excited when they announced this. So that was a day one purchase for me as well. One of the more underrated titles from Vestron, in my opinion, The Unholy. I love any kind of movie about religious stuff. That's always creepy to me. Uh, wasn't the best picture quality upgrade I've seen from Vestron. It wasn't bad. It was certainly they did what they could. But uh, The Unholy is a good, good movie. Um, I'd see if you can get it for a good price. Because uh, I had to wait. For some reason, some of these were just priced really belligerently, like $27.99 on Amazon. But I finally found this for like $19 and I picked it up. But this is a good movie. I, I recommend watching it first before buying it, though, just to see if it fits your taste. Because it, it certainly fit mine, but it may not be for everybody. Next up, how about Warlock, the collection? Um, Steve Miner film. Uh, it's got Warlock 1, 2, and 3. I don't think Steve directed all of them. I know he directed the first one. But he did an audio commentary for it. It's stacked with special features, I can tell you that. But I really, really like Warlock a lot. It's really great late 80s. I almost want to say there was a Nintendo game for this, too. Yeah. But it's like, he's just like this malevolent, like, you know, sorcerer guy that shows up in 1989 and bites this dude's fingers off in the beginning scene it's it's wild stuff but i'm a big fan of warlock but again watch these before buying it or if they have it at a good price i'd grab it because the first one's really good this the second and third one are fine i may not watch those very often but the first one i love revisiting oh without question this was one of the most uh and again i don't have all of them uh for instance uh we skipped Five, which might have been Lair of the White Worm, which is a film I love, but I've yet to find that at just at a decent price on Amazon. Uh, if anybody ever sees it on Amazon and sees that it's fairly cheap again, let me know because I need that movie. It's one of my favorite movies. Yeah, Slaughter High was one of the is a must own because people were losing their mind when they finally saw this film in HD. This is a great comedic slasher film. I think Harry Manfredi needed the score. Uh, how do you not love that artwork? But what's crazy about this film was. There, the only way you could get this film for a long time was when, when one of those budget pack Blu-ray sets. DVD sets, mind you, that Walmart had, which I did a video on that a while back. But when people could see this film in HD for the first time, they were just going crazy. And they did a good job restoring this as good as they could for this. This is a must-own because it was one of those titles that people were dying to see in HD for the longest time. Longest time, including myself. And so they killed it with this. Slaughter High is a must-own. Really, really, really fun, awesome slasher film with a great sense of humor. The next up in my collection is Gothic. Uh, I expected to hate this movie, and I ended up being a really big fan of Gothic. I think it's a really good one. Uh, great cast, Gabriel Byrne, Julia, Julian Sands, Natasha Richardson, Miriam S Sire, and Timothy Spall. This ended up being a really, really cool, good movie. Uh, I want to say this is like 89 or something too. 
86. Yeah, but Gothic is a good one. But that cover is just kind of weird. So I was just like, eh, I don't know. But I ended up really liking it. Uh, that was uh, 12, 13, 14. Okay, we're, we're in a row right now. Uh, oh, God, dude. Class of 1999 is all that and a bag of chips. Uh, Malcolm McDowell's in this. Great film. It's kind of like a sequel. It's kind of, I think, the same director. It's his next class of movie. That was class of 1984 and class of 99. Don't ask me which one's better. I love 84. It's got Alice Cooper in the soundtrack. But 89's no slouch. I mean, 99's no slouch. I'll tell you that. 99's a damn good film. Probably one of the better movies that Vestron has put out, if you, if you want my honest opinion. This is certainly a must-own, too. Um, I love these kinds of movies. These, like, you know, like, kid, rebel, you know, movie. I just love it. Love it, love it to death. 84 and 89 are damn good movies. Cut the class of. That was 14, so whatever 15 is. If 15 is beyond... I don't have Beyond Reanimator because I have an Arrow video version of that. That was Region B. That was a little bit better release, I think. So I, that's why I don't have that, if that's what the next one is. Dagon, H.P. Lovecraft. Uh, you need this just to, because it's a Stuart Gordon film. Out of respect for Stuart, you gotta have this. You know what I mean? But it's a good movie. It's not my favorite Stuart Gordon movie, but it is a good movie. Uh, it certainly picks up as it goes along, too. Uh, but it was different. You know, I thought that was Jeffrey Combs in the front, but it's not It's not him. But Dagon's a good film. Uh, it's early 2000, uh, it's early 2000 Stuart Gordon film. Uh, and you feel the date of it. Not necessarily a bad thing, but um, it's a good film. I would recommend watching this before purchasing it, though. That was 16, or this is 17. Stephen King's Maximum Overdrive. This is a good label, guys. They put out a lot of good stuff. Um, this is a guilty pleasure film. I love the fact that they they have featured music by ACDC on the bottom right there. That's really one of the only reasons to watch this film, some would say. It's not a great movie. It's silly 80s fun, though. This was... Excuse me, I'm sorry. This was Stephen King on drugs, directing a movie. I'm gonna scare the hell out of you. Who could forget that ridiculous promo for this movie where they're playing the Halloween 3 theme in the background? It's it's insane. Go look that up. Just type in Stephen King Maximum Overdrive promo. It's ridiculous. But yeah, this is a good release. Good release. Yeah. A lot of good, a lot of special features on that. A lot of interviews. All right, so that was 17. This is 18. Uh, I believe Maximum Overdrive was the last one for a while, and then we never we we stopped seeing we stopped hearing from Vestron for a little bit. Um, then Shivers came around. David Cronenberg. This is a must own. David Cronenberg. Early David Cronenberg is so good. Some would say some of his best work was in the early part of his career. And I love this film. Shivers is great. This is when the price points hit at the right point, and it gave us all the shivers. Next up, Howie Mandel in Little Monsters. Yeah. Ben Savage, right? I liked it. I liked Little Monsters. I thought it was fun. Just a kid's movie. But uh, Howie Mandel is crazy in it. And Howie Mandel got interviewed for it, too. It's it's worth it just to see the interview with Howie Mandel, to be honest with you. It pushes back a little bit. Throw it away. Uh, the Wraith. Charlie Sheen, Sherilyn Finn, and Randy Quaid. Yeah, The Wraith was great. I really like The Wraith. Just a fun 80s film. It's not a great, great movie, but it's really fun. So in essence, it does what it needs to do. And then there's uh, Ozzy in there. Secret, I'm a secret loser. Come on, Ozzy, man. So I like The Wraith a lot. Um, at this point, they're all worth getting because they all should be very, very, very budget-friendly. They remodeled their pricing and... From Shivers up to what we're doing, they're all very cheap. So you really can't go wrong with any of these right here. Uh, but the Wraith was great. Wraith was great. It's also got Billy Idol and Motley Crue in there. But the Secret Loser is the best song in there. Uh, Sundown, The Vampire in Retreat. I end I actually ended up really liking this film. Uh, Bruce Campbell has a role in here. Uh, it was really comedic and really fun. The cast is great. David Carradine's in here. Uh, like I said, Bruce Campbell. This was a fun movie that I never heard of, ever. I never heard of it, but I ended up being a big fan of it. So yeah, uh, I can't recommend this one enough. I had a blast with Sundown the Vampire and Retreat. Um, again, they're very cheap. You, they're kind of risk-proof in terms of the pricing. I haven't watched this yet. Uh, Patrick Swayze and Steel Dawn. 
So I, I honestly can't comment on that. But again, at the price point, they're no-brainers. I need to watch that. We all get behind on some of these. What can I say? Uh, then I have Candyman, Day of the Dead. Uh, yeah, you damn right I wanted to have Candyman 3. Uh, first of all, just for the artwork alone, it's amazing. I don't hate this film. I think it gets a bad rap because it's arguably the weakest of the three. Uh, Candyman films, like, I like Farewell to the Flesh, but Day of the Dead's not terrible, but it's certainly the, less, the, the least well-made, if you will. But there's still Tony Todd interviews on here. Uh, there's good stuff. And Tony actually talks about it in a fairly positive light looking back at it. But he was burnt out at the time, it sounded like. But, uh, yeah. Candyman 3. Day of the Dead. Uh, Extreme Prejudice. Again, I need to watch this in Nick Nolte film that looks quite simply awesome. I need to check that out soon. Haven't seen this yet, but again, the price points are risk-proof. I don't have Dream a Little Dream. I need to get that. And then last but certainly not least, uh, probably the best release that they could have done so far. I mean, they really outdid themselves with the Silent Night Deadly Night collection for the price point. And we talked about this. Go check out my uh, video I did on that where we, we learned that it's no eco case and separate discs for the movies. And they all look pretty damn good. They were restored fairly well. So I think this has set the new bar for Vestron. They really did. So that's my collection, guys. I hope maybe some of those titles that you never heard about, heard of before or thought about getting, might, you might get a little bit of help. But uh, irregardless, just let me know if you have any questions about any of those. Uh, holler at me. Lair of the White Worm, I need to get. I need Lair of the White Worm. I don't need Beyond, Reani Beyond, Beyond Reanimator because I already have a great Arrow video release of that. But Lair of the White Worm, I'm a big fan of. If you don't own that one, look into that as well, which, which I'm going to. I eventually just need to get it. I'll forget about it, but... Great release. I just want just uh, just a huge round of applause for Vestron for doing doing the Lord's work right now. I think that's great. Drop a comment below, guys. Tell me your favorite titles. And uh, thank you guys for watching this video. We'll see you very, very soon. I want to say thanks to all my amazing Patreon supporters who make Planet CHH possible. For behind-the-scenes photos, videos, music, private live streams, and more, you can subscribe for as little as a dollar a month.